On April 7, 2025, a 2019 Honda Jet HA420, registered November 826 Echo, and operated by Andy Levitt Enterprises LLC, skidded off the runway at Southwest Oregon Regional Airport in North Bend, Oregon, plunging into shallow waters and shaking the aviation world. Departing St. George Regional Airport in Utah at 5.7 a.m. with one pilot and four passengers aboard, this private flight was meant to land routinely, until it didn't. And talk about Honda Jet, we have covered another crash of the same aircraft type on November 5th, 2023 at Falcon Field Airport, and I highly recommend checking out that video for deeper context. You'll find the link in the description below. Now let's dive into what went wrong in Coos Bay. The Honda Jet in our case today was expected to execute a routine landing on runway 05 around 6.12 a.m. Instead, it skidded beyond the runway's end, coming to rest in the shallow waters of Coos Bay, a stark illustration of how quickly precision can unravel in the cockpit. Guided by a precise instrument landing system approach, the Honda Jet descended through the dim pre-dawn sky, its trajectory stable and aligned. Weather reports, however, painted a less forgiving picture, Light rain had left the runway glistening, and a six-knot tailwind from the south added a subtle push. These conditions, while within operational limits, demanded vigilance. Data from ADSB tracking showed the jet's ground speed at 146 knots during the early approach, easing to 133 knots, and settling at 122 knots by touchdown. For a light jet like the Honda Jet, these figures were notably high, especially on a rain-slicked runway stretching 5,980 feet. The tailwind likely amplified the challenge, setting up a scenario where stopping power would be tested to its limits. Security footage from the airport captured the drama unfolding. After touching down on runway 05, the Honda Jet failed to decelerate as expected, sliding roughly 100 feet past the runway's paved surface into the adjacent water. While 5,980 feet is sufficient for most light jets under ideal conditions, the combination of speed, weather, and possibly the jet systems proved too much. Questions linger. Was the runway's condition underestimated, or did the aircraft's design falter under pressure? The incident could have ended in tragedy, but all five occupants, one pilot and four passengers, evacuated safely. Emergency responders whisked them to Bay Area Hospital in Coos Bay, where three were released the same day, one remained overnight for observation, and another was transferred to a specialized facility, suggesting a spectrum of minor injuries. By 10 a.m., salvage crews had hoisted the jet from the water, clearing the scene but leaving a trail of uncertainty. This wasn't merely a pilot's miscalculation, it was a convergence of factors, weather, speed, and technology that turned a standard landing into a cautionary tale. To understand why November 826 Echo couldn't stop, we need to examine the Honda Jet's inner workings and how they perform when the elements conspire against them. The Coos Bay overrun pulls back the curtain on the Honda Jet HA420, a light jet lauded for its futuristic design, over-the-wing engines, a sleek profile, but scrutinized for its ground performance. When November 826 Echo slid into the water on April 7, 2025, it wasn't just weather at play. The jet systems, from brakes to steering, faced a crucible. By dissecting these components, we can better grasp why a seemingly stable landing went awry and whether the aircraft's engineering choices left the pilot fighting an uphill battle. Start with what's missing, ground spoilers. Unlike many jets, which deploy wing-mounted panels to kill lift and press tires firmly onto the runway, the Honda Jet opts for a tail-mounted speed brake. This clamshell device, hinged at the fuselage's rear, opens to create drag, helping slow the aircraft in flight or on rollout. It's a clever solution for a compact jet, but on the ground, it's less effective at transferring weight to the wheels compared to spoilers. On North Bend's wet runway, where traction was already compromised, this design may have allowed the jet to skim longer before the brakes could engage fully. Normally, light jets without spoilers often require longer stopping distances in rain, a factor that could have stretched November 826 Echo's runway needs beyond 5,980 feet, especially with a six-knot tailwind pushing it along. The braking system itself is a marvel of efficiency, but not without limits. Powered by a single hydraulic circuit at 3,000 PSI, it drives the brakes, landing gear retraction, and nose wheel steering, a streamlined setup that reduces weight but courts risk. If hydraulic pressure dips, all three systems suffer. 
The brakes, mounted on 17.5-inch wheels, incorporate anti-skid technology to prevent locking, but their smaller diameter compared to larger jets like the Phenom 300 means less surface area to dissipate heat and grip the runway. Wet surfaces amplify this challenge, as water can form a film under the tires, triggering hydroplaning. Usually, compact wheels on light jets increase hydroplaning risks at speeds above 100 knots. November 826 Echo's 122-knot touchdown fell squarely in this danger zone, suggesting the brakes may have struggled to find purchase. Nose wheel steering adds a wrinkle that's both innovative and tricky. On landing, the nose gear is free castering, meaning it doesn't respond to rudder inputs until two seconds after the jet's weight settles onto the wheels. This delay, intended to simplify crosswind corrections, hands control to aerodynamics initially, letting the rudder align the jet without steering interference. Once engaged, the hydraulic-powered steering can feel overly responsive, with pilots reporting a tendency to overcorrect, especially at higher speeds. On a slick runway where November 826 Echo was still moving briskly, this lag-then-snap dynamic might have made it harder to keep the jet tracking straight, potentially contributing to its drift toward the runway's end. This is a handling quirk requiring extra finesse. Then there's the hydraulic system's backup, an accumulator that stores pressure for emergency braking if the primary circuit fails. It's a lifeline, but a limited one, offering only a handful of brake applications before depleting. If November 826 Echo's pilot, facing a fast-approaching runway end, pumped the brakes aggressively, the accumulator might have emptied quickly, leaving little margin. The single hydraulic circuit's workload, juggling brakes, gear, and steering, underscores a design philosophy that prioritizes simplicity, but may falter under stress, particularly without ground spoilers to ease the braking load. These systems make the Honda Jet a standout in the air, but on the ground, they demand near-flawless execution. The Coos Bay incident suggests a mismatch, a jet built for efficiency meeting a runway that tested its limits. As we delve into pilot experiences next, we'll see how these design choices play out in real-world challenges, building a clearer picture of what tipped N826E over the edge. The North Bend overrun wasn't a solitary blip for the Honda Jet HA420, it's part of a pattern etched in pilot reports to the Aviation Safety Reporting System, ASRS. Eight of 15 submissions flag difficulties stopping the aircraft, particularly when conditions turn adverse. These anonymized accounts reveal operational hurdles that echo November 826 Echo's struggle on April 7, 2025, suggesting that the Kuus Bay incident may reflect systemic challenges rather than a one-off error. One pilot described a crosswind landing where, despite correct aileron and rudder inputs, the jet veered off the runway. A go-around attempt failed to stabilize the approach, and the aircraft's response felt delayed, possibly due to the nose gear's free castering lag. For November 826 Echo, landing with a six-knot tailwind on a wet surface, similar dynamics could have disrupted directional control, especially at 122 knots. Another report cited a hydraulic failure that crippled braking and steering, forcing reliance on the limited accumulator to halt the jet. If November 826 Echo's hydraulic system faltered even slightly, the pilot might have faced a dwindling ability to slow down, amplifying the runway's slick challenge. Short runways have also exposed the Honda jet's limits. A crew landing on a 3,000-foot strip, a near-minimum length, saw their jet drift and swerve after touchdown, with steering and braking inputs lagging, leading to a skid. North Bend's 5,980 feet offered more room, but November 826 Echo's high approach speed suggests parallel difficulties in decelerating swiftly. Wet runways feature prominently, too, one pilot reported no braking response as if sliding on ice with the jet overshooting the runway. A 2024 FAA study on excursions notes that light jets often struggle on wet surfaces due to insufficient tire traction, a risk heightened for November 826 Echo's small 17.5-inch wheels. Most striking is a contaminated runway case, where the flight management system FMS was set for wet conditions, adding a 15% margin. Yet, the jet hydroplaned, sliding into grass. If North Bend's rain left standing water, November 826 Echo's pilot might have misjudged the surface, as the FMS may lack data for such scenarios. These reports highlight a jet that thrives in ideal settings but falters when weather, runways, or systems push back, setting the stage for broader questions about its design and operation. 
The Coos Bay incident thrusts the Honda jet into a spotlight it didn't seek, fueling debate over why these overruns persist. Is it pilot missteps, or does the HA-420's design, brakes, steering, no spoilers, carry an inherent flaw? As the aviation community dissects November 826 Echo's slide, the industry's response offers clues to whether this is a solvable problem or a deeper rift requiring bold action. The FAA pushes Safety Management Systems, SMS, to catch risks before they escalate, urging operators to analyze patterns like the Honda Jet's stopping struggles. For November 826 Echo, an SMS might have flagged the wet runway's threat, prompting stricter landing rules. Yet, a 2024 AOPA report notes that many light jet operators lag in SMS adoption, leaving vulnerabilities exposed. Journalist Patrick Vallée, writing for Aviation Week, pressed Honda directly. With pilots reporting consistent issues, isn't it time to rethink the jet's ground systems? His question resonates in pilot circles, where some, per Flying Magazine discussions, contrast the Honda Jet's performance with jets like the Citation M2, which use spoilers for better wet runway control. Honda's reply underscores safety and ongoing refinement, citing NTSB collaboration, but offering no specifics on changes. This vagueness frustrates observers, especially as prior excursions, like a 2023 Texas case, hinted at similar brake and steering woes. Could larger wheels or dual hydraulics close the gap? Without clear moves, doubts linger. The debate hinges on causation. November 826, Echo's pilot may have miscalculated, but eight ASRS reports suggest design limits, small tires, single hydraulic circuit, amplify errors on challenging runways. My analysis points to a synergy. A slick surface and tailwind likely met a jet unforgiving of imperfect inputs, where spoilers might have made the difference. As the NTSB probes November 826 Echo, its findings could reshape Honda's path, tweaked systems, enhanced training, or both. Coos Bay is a call to bridge innovation with resilience, ensuring jets like the HA420 land safely, no matter the weather. Thank you for exploring this with us. Let's keep pushing for answers to make skies safer.